Welcome to the Big Blue Radio Show, coming to you on Tulsa Community College's online radio station, The Grid, and on the Creativity Channel. I'm Lee Goodson, President of Tulsa Community College. And I'm Greg Stone, Provost of TCC's Metro Campus in downtown Tulsa. TCC is home to many talented faculty and staff members, many of whom have talents and abilities that may not always be on display during their regular workday. Today, we'll talk with Dr. John Gibson, Provost of TCC's Southeast Campus, about both his career at TCC and his work as an artist and painter. That's up next on the Big Blue Radio Show. <laughs> Dr. Gibson, thank you for being here today. We're certainly glad to have you. Well, thanks for having me. At the C4C and on the Creativity Channel. You uh, became an administrator, but that was after you had been an art professor. Right. Is that right? That's true. It Talk to us a, a little bit about how you got interested in, in, in administration coming from art and uh -huh and sort of how you connect the two. Okay, um, well I, I was an art instructor for about 13 years and the mm -hmm. last four years I was a, a department chair of fine arts. Okay. So I kind of got my toe in the water a little bit uh, in, in administration and you know, I, I get asked that question a lot so that's a good, a good question. There was an opportunity to move into continuing ed which is like a big candy store. Uh, <laughs> all kinds of creative things you can do. So it was just a natural move. There, life happened. It was mm -hmm. an opportunity mm -hmm. to, uh, to move from uh, uh, teaching into administration and kind of my nature a lot of times is, hey, just try that. <laughs> So I did it. Sort but of it, a leap of faith. A leap of faith, but mm -hmm. it, it really, it, it tied together very much so, the, the, the creative aspects of, of setting up classes. Uh, sure, we can do that. You know, you, mm -hmm. how in the heck are we going to do that now for this <laughs> business? But it is very much like a piece of artwork, if, if you will, kind of the same principle. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was really a natural flow. A lot of problem solving, a lot, a lot of, of creativity. A lot of creativity, a lot of problem solving, and so mm -hmm. uh, really enjoyed it. And it, that was good that I got. I think continuing ed was a perfect introduction in, into perfect that. Perfect bridge program uh, to, uh, you know, from, yeah. From doing the, 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 the chair then into that, but it, it, a lot of the same components that I had in, in, uh, in teaching and in actually creating artwork. John, you're a painter mm -hmm. <clears throat> primarily. Right. You paint in oils and, and I'm sure you've done worked in other medium as well. and, and um, Dr. Goods, I don't know if you've seen much of John's work. I but have it's, seen it's some of it. It's very impressive. It's, He's a wonderful painter. Impressive. To when say did the you least. first become interested in art? What what drew you to okay. that as a way to express yourself creatively? Well, that was always, uh, and that's. Uh, I, I think it goes back to my house, my my upbringing, my, my parents. My mother's a, a music major, has a degree in music, and great pianist, uh, and I, and uh, other family members were involved in art, but it was always there. It wasn't anything that I actually majored in, in in high school, didn't take any art classes, but uh, we were in Oklahoma City about half the time and I'd go to the, the gallery there uh, as, as a child in, in grade school. So it was it was always available. Mm -hmm. uh, but coming out of that, I was, I was a pre-dental major <laughs> in, in college uh, for about two and a half years. And one of the ways that I studied, because I was pretty visual, I drew everything. I could remember it that way, and I remember going to the OU uh, dentistry school to find out about getting into school. They said, well, you know, we have people, you don't necessarily have to get that degree in zoology, which is what I was doing at the time, uh, but we even got a music major in here. Next thing I knew, I was telling my dad, you know, I think I'll switch from dentistry to, to art. <laughs> Uh, I have very loving, <laughs> understanding parents. My father had just come I back guess from, so. from, from he had just come back from New Orleans on a business trip with all the street artists mm. out there, and uh, and I said, "No, oh, no, Dad, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna be a commercial artist in graphic design. I'm gonna make I'm not gonna be one of those painters." <laughs> <'Cause>, well, <laughs> that lasted for about a semester at OU in, in terms of graphic design, and I mm. became a painter. Uh, I thought, you know what a great profession. These guys have hair down to their shoulders, they wear blue jeans, and they teach drawing <laughs> all day. I'd love to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's kind of the progression into it. But it was, it was something that was always available, and I, I used a lot and uh, could do, but never really thought anything of it until literally I was, uh, uh, you know, a couple of years into, into college. Hmm. 
You've attributed your leadership style before to your uh, profession as an artist. Mm -hmm. Can you describe your leadership style and tell us why you attribute that uh, to being an artist? Okay, all right. Um, first off, I, I, I really fire on both sides of my brain, uh, very much right and, and left. As a matter of fact, kind of my training in art is more of an old master's technique, which would be a little more left-brained, if you will, uh, and, and, and I'm a person that has a lot of attention to detail, but I'm also out on the other side, on the right side, on, on creativity. And to me, uh, leadership has always been one of, uh, don't have it all worked out to start with. I mean, it's like a piece of, of artwork. You, you kind of have a concept, but then you got to get in and sketch it and play with it, and uh, things change, plans change, and that's good. You can go ahead and change those colors, or change what you're doing in in in, in uh, your your leadership at that at that time to go with the direction that you really want to go. Because a lot of times you get into it, and that's not really what we we're wanting to do here. Let's mm -hmm. paint this out, or let's change this and go another direction with with what this initiative that we're we're working with. So, um, I've I've always had the uh, the detailed side, the, the structured side, but countered with a very creative. Um, not anything goes. Type, but very creative. Uh, go ahead and try that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's okay See to do happens. that because uh, you know if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up a little too much space. It's mm. all right to to try that, and there's going to be some failures along saying. the way. I'm going to write that yeah. down. Yes. <clears throat> John, before you moved to becoming provost at the Southeast Campus a few months ago, for several years you were mm -hmm. provost at the Northeast Campus. What are some of the projects that you're most proud of? in your time as a provost at Northeast? I mean, the, the fire training center yeah. was a huge undertaking yeah, that, that comes to mind, but what else? That's a big one, but I, I think the first thing that I encountered when I, when I got to Northeast, and the great thing was, was th there was already a, a team in place with some ideas of what they'd like to do, and, and renovation mm. was what we did. Um, uh, it's a major renovation across the campus, uh, not only the renovation, but also furniture upgrades. And that doesn't sound like a lot, mm -hmm. but when you have faculty come up and say, thank you, I can now see over in the engineering technology building, thank mm -hmm. you for what you've done to the classroom. That means mm -hmm. so much, and you could see the results for the faculty and the yeah. students. So that was a big one, but again, I, I was blessed with a team, but they, they, had, a, they had a plan in, in, in mind. They just needed some help initiating that and to me that was it was real easy uh, to, to do that and then of course the fire training center was one of those that because um, I, I was there when we were digging the dirt actually before then as a matter of fact the first time I when I was working for TCC back in 2006 2008 I was attending meetings for the fire training center all different players at that yeah. time uh, so to be able to see that from the, the concept of the, the floor plans all the architectural plans to the to the final product, but see it being built and created right in front of you. Plus all the, you know, again, like a, it's like a big piece of sculpture. Right. Not everything's working out. We, got, we have to change this a little bit, change that. But just a wonderful uh, 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 structure and, and facility for the, for the city of Tulsa and for the college. The other, the other one was that's really tied to that was the, uh, the paramedic program. Mm. That was, talk about continuing ed, that was the mm -hmm. first thing I did. You know, imagine going from art into starting the paramedic program. That <laughs> was one of my first things when I, I went into continuing ed back in Texas. And uh, there was a, an opportunity to get a, a paramedic program going at the college. And uh, uh, the late Ernie Evans had, had the mm -hmm. insight of, of hiring a really good person in mm -hmm. that area. Yeah. And uh, that, that program has just blossomed. Yeah. And so I'm really very, very proud of that program. So you recently uh, came from Northeast Campus to Southeast Campus, mm -hmm. and now the School of Visual and Performing Arts is, is part of your yeah. um, scope of responsibility. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's really that's really big, and I yeah. bet you're really excited about yeah. that because yeah. it's right up your alley. Yeah. Um, talk to us about what kind of opportunities yeah. there are for students and uh -huh. for citizens in Tulsa okay. and some of the different things that they can either major in as a student yeah. or just get involved in yeah. as a community member. Yeah. And, and it's so exciting. It's kind of full circle now. I've, it I've is. You know, been in administration long, much longer than I ever taught. Now it's come back 
to the visual and performing arts, or, or fine arts, if you will. And just in my earlier days with that, seeing the, the synergy between the theater and music and art majors, I think that's a real opportunity for our students to play mm -hmm. off one another. Even though they're at different campuses, there's, there's some uh, great opportunities for cross Across campus and even within the campus to uh, to play off the creativity of each other. Um, of course, we've got the the, the, the uh, music and, and theater at Southeast, and now interior design, mm -hmm. and of course the the digital media and and the visual arts program here at, at Metro. Um, the the opportunities for uh, the uh, the community. First off, just in terms of what I what I love about this is the workforce aspect. Mm. Uh, imagine. <laughs> You know, you're going to art school, but you could actually also learn a little bit about graphic design or mm -hmm. digital media, mm -hmm. where you can make a living when you get out instead of necessarily having to get an MFA right. and hoping you might <clears throat> get a teaching position. Right, um, right. Uh, so or end up on the streets as an artist in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> can't, can't do that. Uh, so there, there's, uh, there, there's that aspect of what it, it's, it's offering. I think it's given so much more to our students mm -hmm. in what is available to them. Not that it wasn't there before, but now that it's tied together right. because we, we're, we're going to be uh, very intentional on, on tying those areas together and, and making those, uh, if you will, cross-discipline uh, opportunities right. available for our, our, our students. And then for the community at large, uh, you know, besides, yes, you could, you could get your degree, you could go to work in the area. We have an aging population, hmm. and we need things to, for, for the, those folks to, for fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, they, these, uh, these uh, art classes, theater classes, you know, acting for non-majors, non those provide people opportunities to express themselves uh, and it's more than just a leisure activity I think they're, they're really that's finding the community something community part of a community college really yeah yeah, yeah. and and to me that's actually a, a big part you'd be surprised the number of, of community folks that you have enrolled in many of these areas and it's important it's, mm -hmm. it's a, a, a lot of it, it's at that time of their life where they're looking for something to new to, uh, new to do and um, uh, highly creative folks mm -hmm. I, I about half my load when I taught were with community people. Is and that I just, right? just loved it. Yeah. And the thing is, is, is uh, the majority of them were much better than my, <laughs> my 18 year old majors because they'd been doing it for a long time. Right, right. They were ready to really learn it. Really yeah. learn it. And of course, we see even with our community choirs and all, there's uh, people who just want to get involved. Uh, but it's, 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 it's not only bridging that group, but I, I think with our, with our high schools, mm -hmm. showing, you know, We've got a great music program here at, 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 at TCC, or a great art program. And what's even beyond that is what's happening in Tulsa, mm -hmm. uh, you know, down in this this neck of the woods in the, the, the Brady District, the Guthrie Green, the Hardesty Center, uh, yeah. uh, the, the museums, the galleries. It's like an art, performing arts mecca mm -hmm. right here in Tulsa, <clears throat> and opportunities to you know move on from the community college to the four-year institution. I just love the way Tulsa has has grown over the past 40 years. Yeah. John, before we get to the to the big question <clears throat> in the last couple of minutes we have left, um, I think those of us with liberal arts backgrounds have known this for a long time, but, but it seems like you see more and more in, in the news that large companies are seeing the value in having liberal arts majors or, or, or employees with liberal arts backgrounds because of critical thinking skills that, that they come with. What skill sets for you are important to, that students need to, to recognize if they are in a liberal mm -hmm. arts area or in a visual performing arts mm -hmm. um, that that are, are marketable skills for the workforce. Oh, I mean, yeah. What are those things that, that students walk away uh, with when they're liberal arts majors or fine arts majors? Being able to think outside of the box and not be, I mean a lot of times you need to not color outside of the box, but there's <laughs> times where you really need to think outside of that box and and, and come up with some, some solutions that, well this is really isn't working, why aren't we doing this? Here's a way we might be able to do this. So I think I think that's a really big plus there. I think also the the, the ability to be able to to visualize a concept mm -hmm. within a, a a business and and see that and see well, okay it could be this way or it could be that way. So thinking about and actually seeing the you know what the end product might be, realizing that there's going to be some some changes along the way. The other thing is the tremendous amount. Of dedication. If, if you're going into visual and performing arts, I mean, you're looking at spending six, seven hours a day 
at least on what you're doing. There's got to be, if you're going to make it, there's got to be that kind of dedication. Mm -hmm. I think those are transferable uh, patterns. Uh, that, okay, this is a prog project I've been given. I'm going to see this through, and I'm, I'll put in however many hours it takes to do that. Mm -hmm. So that that uh, ability to, to really get focused, laser focused, if you will, with a touch of creativity with it, I think are, are big, big pluses. And then being able to uh, to uh, to verbalize and visualize yeah. uh, is, is, is a big deal. It all comes out of, of the, the liberal arts. and. Uh, uh, being able to appreciate different opinions. That's, mm -hmm. that's one of the things that you, I think you learn from the arts is that there are several ways of, of doing the same thing. Right, and, and, and to learn how to appreciate those perspectives. Yeah, yeah, it may and not to be. And value them even yeah. if they're different from yours. You know, yeah. it may be, I, 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 I really liked Rembrandt, but I can appreciate Picasso, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so there, there's that, plus you, you learn a lot by doing that. And the, the other thing is, is, is just that, is being able to look at different ways of doing things and grabbing the best. You know, you hear the old adage, don't need to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wheels out there that you can customize right. uh, to, to, to your, your whatever it is you're trying to do. So you talked about um, when you had started college, you were a pre-dentist uh -huh. major, and yes. two and a half years in, two and a half years in, you changed to art and you had the understanding parents. Talk to us about, uh, the big question is always, if you had the opportunity to, to give advice to your 18-year-old uh -huh. self, what would it be? Would you have changed anything? Oh gosh, you know, that, and that's a, I love that question, and it's, it's one that I, you know, I want to go back to my 18-year-old self and think, you're so young, <laughs> uh, but but uh, and, and it wouldn't be. What were you thinking? It'd be. Look what you have ahead of you. It's, it's a blank canvas, and you the, these next couple of years really enjoy. You know, I, I when I went back for my doctorate, I loved being in school, mm -hmm. and I realized I had that same opportunity. You know, mm. b beforehand. <laughs> to love being in school. To love being in school yeah. and, and, and the moment. Uh, and so I would, I would tell myself to, to really absorb that. Uh, but to you know, stay the course, uh, to, to stay in school, um, and, and to really follow the dreams. And the, the beauty of, of you being 18 years old is you don't have that life experience, so you're, you're apt to try things that you know, this old guy might not, might not try now. Mm -hmm. Try them. Mm. Uh, Put it out there, uh, and 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 uh, pursue what you want, but enjoy it. Really enjoy, and and this goes beyond you getting out of college. I'm talking to myself here. Uh, <laughs> is is don't live five years down the road. You know the the the, the presence is or the time is 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 the presence. It's mm -hmm. right now, yeah. and and enjoy school because it's a great. God. It's such an opportunity to, it is. to Living learn. in the moment is yep. advice we could give to our 50-year-old yeah. self. So, so that's, that's you know, I, 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 I love that question. I was kind of thinking of, of uh, you know, sitting in, if I really could talk to myself, just yeah. enjoy it. And, you know, things are going to work out just fine. Yeah. Uh, you're you're going to have a, a, a good life, but it's, it's, there's going to be challenges. You need to stay the course, but keep following those, those dreams. And like you said, be ready for the opportunities. That's always yeah. great advice to right. have. Yeah. Well, thanks great. for sharing that with okay. us. Thank uh, you. John, we appreciate it. Okay. That's all the time we have for today, but we do want to thank our guest, Dr. John Gibson, for joining us today on the show. And thank you for being here, too. Remember, you can find us every week online at The Grid, tulsacc.edu slash The Grid, and on the Creativity Channel. We'll see you next time.